Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And in this video, we're going to look at the only cookbook in my cookbook collection that's not based on a book. Um, that is a traditional kind of cultural cookbook. So we're going to be looking at Celtic folklore cooking. So this has a lot of information in it besides the recipes. It's not child focused. The entire first chapter is with alcohol. Lots of lots of alcohol. And there's a lot of recipes in here where I can't find the ingredients for, like nettle and possibly uh, various other strange things. So, because I'm in the American Southwest, if you're back east, you might be able to find this stuff. If you're in the UK, you'll probably be able to find this stuff. But this is based on Celtic cooking. I like Celtic cooking. I kind of like the Celt. There's a lot of cultural information on these things. It talks about the Celtic um, Wheel of the Year. Um, if you're not familiar with that, this is kind of how they're, it's their celebrations. You've heard of the solstices, both summer and winter. Um, though most people have this weird mistake that winter is the first day of winter. So no, Yule is not the first day of winter. Yule is more like it's the middle of winter and it's calling back the light. Summer is the exact opposite. It is the, uh, it's often called, called midsummer because it's it's the end of June, so it's the middle of the summer, and it's the preparations where fall is on the way. So they're starting to prepare for winter. Then you have the two middle seasons, um, where you have, uh, I mean, Marbon, I'm probably going to mispronounce this. This is in September. This is what we call the fall equinox. And then you have Orstra which is the spring equinox. So you have those. And in between those are actually the major Sabbaths of the year. Um, one of them, which is kind of the start of the year for Celtic people. It's a fire festival. It goes by many names. Um, it, it ends like Halloween. It's All Saints Day, All Souls Day. It's right around October 31st, and this is, um, it, it takes back to what Dila de los Muertos does. It's the thinning of the veils. It's a time to remember the dead, remember the past, and celebrate it. So, yeah, there's a couple of different, they become scary, you're trying to scare off demons and kind of thing. That kind of, it's more of a New Year kind of feel to it. No, they're not evil. Um, I have in the past practiced neo-paganism. Trust me, they're not evil. These are uh, nature festivals. Um, they have to do with literally the wheel of the year of uh, harvest stuff. So the other one is um, is Yule. Well, actually, Yule. Yule's not actually all that important. Um, that's the next one. Really, is um, the Catholics call it Candle Mass. So it's around February second. So that's I cannot remember off the now you name of my head what that is called. In fact, however, this book nicely tells me. So this, yeah. Um, actually, it's Mayburn. Am I messing? No, it's Imbolc. Sorry, wrong holiday. So. In here, the book shows you a little bit. There's a little circle there. Um, so you have the my, the major ones. You have in, you have Samhain, which is here, Imbolc, which is in February, and then Orstra, which is what we call uh, the spring equinox. The next one is Beltine. Uh, a lot of people refer to that as May Day, so that's fertility festival. And then you have Midsummer, and then you have Luanza, which is in August, and then you have Mayborn, which is September. And then we go back. So it talks a lot about this. It talks about some of the Christian concepts and stuff, but it very much talks about the Celts along with cooking. But let's get to the recipes and why on earth this is difficult. Um, again, the first uh, in entire uh, chapter is on beverages. So you have the major things. You have the introduction. You have the Celtic Wheel of the Year. So they talk about that history. And then they go to beverages, breads, porridges, and breakfast foods. Milk, eggs, and cheese, soups and stews, vegetables, fish, fish, shellfish, and seaweed, meat and wild game, and then desserts. And then it has a bibliography and related readings. So I will go through, like I did my other books, all of the recipes in each chapter. It also does a lot of weird, interesting poetry and stuff as well. So and it talks about each of the Celtic festivals and 
different things. So a little bit into that. Um, yes, October 31st, which is where where it starts, I believe. Yeah. So Halloween, Hollow Mass. Oh, I'm not going to pronounce half of these. So, but again, it talks about celebrations, particularly with the recipes of what you would celebrate on each one. So it gives a good bit of information there. So let's move on if I can finally get through here. All right, so here we go. Beverages. There's a lot here. Most of these are alcoholic. So um, adults and teenagers. So it, it still is a good book. Um, not to mention, I would not cook half of these. So as I right. So that, that hinders that. I cannot pronounce the first one. Syllabub. So, um, uh, tell me what the heck that is. Uh, it, it looks like sherry and cream. So, it's a cream sherry. Sweet wine. Uh, I'm going to have difficulty pronouncing some of these. So, um, let me hold this in front of you if you can possibly see some of this. But again, this is the alcohol section. So, uh, Scottish Spiced Ale is in here. Herbs to spice... I can't pronounce this. Oh, it's a word for whiskey. So, it's spiced whiskey. Welsh Posit Cup. Eggnog. Hot whiskey. Hot butter rum. Black velvet. Wassel. Yes, the Christmas song. Here we go, wassling. It's alcohol. Uh, mulled, mulled cider. Milk punch. Athol Bros. I'm not Celtic. I, I do not speak Welsh. I do not speak Irish. I do not speak Scottish. So I don't know what that is. Um, Irish coffee. Saffron cordial. Yeah, I still have yet to buy saffron. It's very expensive. Um, homemade Irish cream. Sowins. Probably not pronouncing that. An old mead recipe. Mead, which is, yes, a form of beer. Um, Raisins in sun wine, heather ale, heather wine, lemon wine, white, oh, I'm mispronouncing this one, Melgith, again, uh, I, my family, at least some of it comes from England, but it was a very, very long time ago. The more recent stuff is German and Swedish. I don't speak either one of those languages. Um, let's see, uh, Soljin. A slower gin, I'm not joking, it says a slower gin, um, blackberry wine, egg punch, spring wine, chamomile wine, oh, I can't pronounce this one, hypercrust, strawberry summer liqueur, orange brandy wine, wine cup, witchwood or elderberry wine, which I've heard of, I think, in the, probably, I, I read Celtic stuff all the time, um, Dandelion wine, a hot pot of herbal tea, so that's non-alcoholic, a perfect pot of tea, because of course they're English, and floral punch. I think that's it. So that's those are the recipes in that one. So most of those are alcoholic. Let's move on to the second like the porridges. So porridge, which is oatmeal. That's what porridge is. It's oatmeal. Berry porridge. Okay. Rustin Flammery and Flutinry. Okay, what in God's name? Uh, some of these are just describing things. So this looks like some sort of oat thing. So let's see. What else do we have? Um, I have not made all of this stuff or even half of it. I haven't had time yet. Um, or I'm always interested. Again, I don't drink alcohol, but this is kind of interesting and I don't have access to some of this material. Um, Let's see. Prati Oaten, which sounds some sort of oat thing. Apple fritters, we've heard of those. Carrot fritters, which actually sound very interesting. Uh, elderflower fritters, I do not have access to elderflowers. Um, Beastings pancakes. Welsh Shrovetide pancakes. Okay, so this is gonna be um, Shrovetide. Shrove Tuesday, also known as Mardi Gras. So they're Pancakes for Mardi Gras, if you're not unaware of what that is, or uh, also known as Mardi Gras, for Christians, or basically Catholics. It's right before Lent, so they're trying to use up all their lard, because they're not supposed to be eating animal products. 
So they're trying to use up all the butter so they make pancakes. So you have pancake day. That's what um, Shrove Tuesday is also called. So you also have apple tansy pancakes, hot cross buns, heard the rhyme. Um, I don't know what off the top of my head, but it's a children's nursery rhyme. Marigold buns, box city, Halloween barm brack. No idea what that is. Um, what is that? Oh, it's like spun in 92. Some of these are funny. Um, what is this? It looks like... It, it looks sort of so, like some of... Uh, a, you have raisins and currants and candied peel. So it, it's kind of... It's a fruit bread. So, moving on. Um, cinnamon toast. Oh, onion bread. Uh, Eveline Carney's Shea Soda Bread Recipe. So it's a soda bread. Uh, rhubarb bread. Which sounds very, very interesting. Uh, rhubarb bread. Caraway rye bread. Yeah, not a rye bread person. Brown soda bread. If you're not aware what soda bread is, it has a tendency to be really, really dense. Um, so I've actually never made it. Um, scones. Sweet scones. Okay, I'm going to mispronounce this even though I know what the heck it is. It's tyrical bread. Um, the English equivalent of this would be a molasses. So it's a molasses bread. That doesn't sound very good to me. Um, moving on. Uh, where are we? Marmalade loaf. I'm not a fan of marmalade. Uh, raspberry and raspberries and toast. That sounds pretty good. Yellow meal bread. What the heck? Uh, I have to look up some of these because they're funny. But this can be very, very interesting for your children and looking at yellow meal bread. Ah, it's a cornmeal bread, which makes sense. Okay. Moving on. Oat bread. I've made a type of oat bread before. Honey wheat bread. Crescent moon rolls. Um, Mary's Bangkok. It has the, I think it's either Irish or Welsh or something. I can't pronounce the language. Um, and pumpkin bread, so which would be a quite uh, appropriate. Some of the stuff would be appropriate for when I'm building with this, which is in October of 2021. Like this book specifically. Okay, so those are the breakfast recipes in this book. Moving on to out of breakfast foods, on to milk, eggs, and cheese. So we have buttermilk cheese. I've tried to make cheese once; it didn't turn out very well. Oh, and I can't pronounce this one. Stirabout. What about cheese? Stirabout looks like milk, flour, sugar, nutmeg, and cold milk. Um, this, I'm not even quite sure, even by describing it, involves boiling milk, mixing together flour, sugar, and cinnamon, and nutmeg. And Mix in two milks, two cold, two tablespoons cold milk, add flour mixture to hot milk. I still don't know what quite what this is. <laughs> Moving on, um, egg in a cup, Scotch eggs. Okay, I know what Scotch eggs are. Um, so you take a hard boiled egg and you cover it when it amounts to be meatloaf, and then you cook it. So it, it's meatloaf surrounding a hard boiled egg. That's what scotch eggs are. Yes, I believe that's what this are. No, not egg in a cup. Yes, scotch eggs, yes. Ten hard-boiled eggs, chilled flour, pork sausage, breadcrumbs, uh, mace. Um, you're not familiar what the heck mace is. Um, so nutmeg is the dried nut. Um, the fruit around it is where they get mace. So that's where the mace comes from. Uh, Two tablespoons mace or minced parsley, so depending on your opinion. Um, salt, pepper, two eggs beaten, and then you deep fry it. So, yeah, it, it, it's pork sausage mixed into what amounts to be a similar meatloaf surrounding a hard-boiled egg and fried. This is not healthy. It's not remotely healthy. Um, moving on. Tossed eggs with shallots. Stirred eggs. Name day breakfast. Okay, I can figure out what that is. What the heck is... And if you're not familiar with a name day is... Uh, name day is a birthday. I only know this because it's brought up in a, 
a lot of fiction. I think I've heard Name Day in Mercedes Lackey, which is an adult uh, fantasy. I may cover some of them. They qualify for teen. Okay, on to Name Day Breakfast. So, onion, bell pepper, butter, potatoes, salt and pepper, water, jumbo eggs, interesting, milk, salt, pepper, ham, and bacon, crumbled. So you cook the peppers in butter, add potatoes, salt, and water, cover. So you're cooking, okay, and chopped fine, you're chopped. Um, basically, you're cooking the potatoes, and then you beat the eggs in milk and salt pepper. You stir in ham and bacon, and you pour over a potato mixture. So, interesting. What on earth am I rereading this? Okay, so you beat the eggs and milk and salt together, then you stir in ham and bacon, and then you pour this over potato mixture and then cook. So basically, it almost sounds like an omelet. So moving on, name day breakfast. Uh, where are we? Um, Welsh rabbit. This is not a rabbit dish. It's cheese. Seriously. A Welsh rabbit, and it's in one of the other cookbooks that I'll talk about. Uh in this month as well. It's cheese. So it's yeah, shredded cheese, milk, dried mustard, Worcestershire sauce, cayenne pepper. That's not going to be traditionally Irish, um, if you're not aware. Uh, neither is anything potatoes. Potatoes and peppers are all uh, New World foods. Particularly potatoes come from Peru. So these things would have been coming. They're not from the ancient Celts at all if it contains um, potatoes or any sort of chili pepper. So, an egg beaten and two slices of bread, toasted bread or four poached eggs. So, yeah, you make essentially a, you combine a bunch of, yeah, you melt the cheese and then you pour it over bread. So, or you turn in the, yeah, you turn in the, uh, mix in the beaten eggs and heat it so Sounds very interesting. That's a Welsh rabbit. Moving on. So essentially, it's cheesy eggs over toast. All right. Moving on. Bulganese cheese, floral cheese pie. Let me look up one for one thirty-six. What the heck is floral cheese pie? Not the Welsh rabbit. Oh, okay. Uh, this is a dessert. It includes elder blossoms and a flower pot. Um, farm cheese or cottage cheese. So it looks kind of, it's like a fruity cheese dish. All right, moving on. Uh, I can't pronounce this one. Uh, Cargan Moss Lacamage. Okay, I don't know any what this is. So I must, again, look it up. What is this? Okay, it's actual moss. I'm not joking. It's moss. It's dried Kerrigan moss with milk, sugar, and lemon zest. Heat it in a pan until the moss has dissolved, and then you strain it and pour it into a wet jelly mold and cool. So, it, it, okay, I'm not quite sure what, it, it's some sort of moss turned into jelly, but lemon zest, and milk. That sounds bizarre. Moving on <laughs> here. Uh, egg cheese. Uh, what is egg cheese? I can find egg cheese. Uh, egg cheese. Milk, eggs, buttermilk, sugar, and honey, and fruit. So, and these are very, very simple. So you double boil eggs, buttermilk, you, in a double boil, you combine eggs, buttermilk, and sugar, then add add to milk on the stove and simmer low for 30 minutes. Interesting. It, it's some sort of weird, like, egg drink. Moving on. Uh, egg cheese. They're actually... Okay, for egg cheese, there's no actual cheese in here. So... Moving on, I'm guessing it's a type of, you're straining it, so it's cheese. Uh, moving on. Junket or curds and whey. So if your child is interested in what the heck curds and whey are, 
there's an entire recipe for curds and whey. Um, I have no interest. It's curdled milk. Um, it's basically what you get before you make cheese. Um, I can't pronounce this, so it gives an English translation. Body cobbler or thick milk. Okay, next recipe. To dress sorrel with eggs. So sorrel is a plant. It's like a lettuce, some trust between an herb and lettuce. So, and you're dressing it with eggs. So it's, it's an egg salad to an extent. Um, parsley, sage, thyme, savory, and lemon, thyme, butter. So this is, and then homemade herbal butter. So these are types of butters you can make. Almond butter, fairy butter. Okay. I must figure out what the heck fairy butter is. Egg yolks, sugar, orange flower water, and two sticks of softened butter. So weak egg yolks and sugar, blend with orange flower water and butter. Interesting. So it's orange flower water butter and put into a cookie press to form decorative shapes. Um, interesting. Moving on. Um, doesn't look like you cook the eggs. Uh, that would be dangerous, at least, possibly. I don't do raw eggs. Uh, let's see. Moving on. And milk, egg, and cheese porridge. So those are the breakfast. Those are milk, eggs, and cheese. So those are the recipes you find in milk, eggs, and cheese. And moving on. Yes, this is going to be a tad bit of a long video just because there's a lot of recipes in this book and I keep randomly looking things up. So this is soups and stews. So it gives a couple different broths. So you have chicken stock, beef stock, kidney soup, which is kidney beans, stock, stock, scotch broth. What the heck is stock broth? Which is, again, why this video is taking a very, very long time. Um, it's a very interesting book, 152. Uh, scotch broth looks like a beef broth with vegetables in it. Um, elder nettle porridge pottage um, is something that's described, so it's giving me elders and nettles and various herbs. Um, chestnut soup, self-explanatory. Parton brie, 158 here. Uh, it involves anchovy fillets and potatoes and uncooked rice. Um, interesting. Again, most of this stuff I wouldn't touch. Mutton soup. I have never been able to find mutton. If you're not familiar with mutton. Um, so lamb is young sheep. Mutton is old sheep. So it's old sheep. Moving on. I, I literally have never seen mutton anywhere. I think it's hard to find even in Britain. Um, leek and oatmeal soup. Yarrow and onion soup. I may even pronounce that. Yarrow is a plant. Uh, smoked haddock soup. Haddock is a fish, if you're not familiar. Um, traditional Irish stew, oatmeal herb porridge, carrot soup, um, country Wexford Irish stew. This is like a variation. Cockle soup. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a shellfish. Uh, Scottish pheasant soup. And I can't pronounce this one because it's probably in Welsh. So, 150. It's, yeah, I Call Moog. I have no idea what this is. Um, one second. I'm going to look it up and see if I can explain what it is. Uh, let's see. Leeks, onions, carrots. It's a vegetable soup with mutton and potatoes. So that's what that is. Um, mussel and onion stew, watercress soup, oxtail soup, venison soup. Okay, I try to make this as um, child-friendly as possible, but kakaliki. Yes, that's the recipe. Um, what the heck is kakaliki? Uh, kakaliki is a chicken. It's a chicken soup. So, it's chicken and leeks and rice. Moving on. Game soup. Sorrel soup. We mentioned that. That's a vegetable. Garlic porridge and nettle soup. So, I don't... Obviously, I can't access nettles. Uh, as far as I know, I have no idea where the heck I would get mutton. Uh, apparently, it's very stuck, tough. So that's the soups and stews in there. So let's move on to the next set of recipes, if I can find this. 
All right, pass the soups and stews. On to our vegetables. Now I use some of the vegetables. The vegetable stuff is good. Uh, the Welsh bubble and squeak, uh, that sausage and potatoes is what a bubble and squeak is. Red cabbage, peas of pudding. Um, peas. I don't know why this is here and not in the veg in the breakfast thing. So peas in this case is referring to split peas into a pudding. So um, champ, which I have no idea what it is, 193. I'm going to find out that what that is. Um, it's onions and mashed potatoes. So let's see. Marigold pudding. Peas with onions and cauliflower. I think I've done this. Oh, missed one. Uh, buttered leeks. Self-explanatory. Stove caddies, which I did, which is actually really, really good. It's uh, potatoes on the stove. Uh, normally you cut them kind of medallion size. They're very, very good. It's a great way to do potatoes. Okay, can't pronounce this one. Colca cannon. What the heck is this? That is a problem with this book. I can't always pronounce these things. Um, potatoes and cabbage and onion in butter. So that's what that is. Chestnuts and Brussels sprouts, baked onions, sweet peas and with mint, mushrooms and cream, which actually sounds very good, beets with cloves and cinnamon, braised spinach, pan haggerty. Okay, figure out what the heck this is because again, I'm not Welsh. Um, pan haggerty is bacon fat, potatoes, onions. Oh, I think I did this one. It, it, it's potatoes and cheese. It's potatoes and cheese and bacon. Um, I think I tried this. It was very, very good because potatoes and cheese and bacon. Who can go wrong? Uh, moving on. Michael Mass salad. So that's a uh, Christian holiday of um, Michael Mass. Oh, wonderful. Another thing. Punch nip. No, I have no idea what that is. Uh, what is this? Potatoes, turnips, and butter, and apple in cream, which is optional. So it's you're cooking potatoes and turnips and butter and a boiled apple which is optional so basically it's potatoes and turnips with applesauce moving on uh sunshine mash which i'm positive is potatoes um uh, sea kale with butter so excellent right you're cooking sea kale uh green beans and almonds watercress salad spinach greens with garlic spring pudding which Exactly. See what the heck the spring pudding is. Um, yes, this is going to be very, very long to do. Uh, spring pudding is wonderful. I still don't know what the heck this is. Bistort leaves. One of these days I'll get to the UK again. I've been to Wales once, very briefly. Nettle tops, dandelion leaves, and ladies' mantle plum and barley. Oh, this is some sort of weird barley thing. And plants. And butter and egg. Hmm. I'm not particularly fond of barley. We've tried it before. So, moving on. Uh, an herbal recipe to see fairies. An herbal recipe to see fairies. Okay, so this is one of the things I haven't pointed out. Some of these recipes, which is what this is, aren't exactly a normal recipe. This is normal recipe. This is not. So... An herbal recipe to see fairies involves salad oil. Um, pretty sure, I can't feel like the Americans have a, um, normally it's olive oil, some sort of salad oil. Uh, put salad oil into a glass vial that has been washed with rose water and marigold water. Um, apparently the flowers should be gathered while facing east. Okay, add in the buds of Hollycock, the flowers of marigold, the flowers of flowers or tops of wild thyme, and the buds of young hazel. The wild thyme should be gathered from the side of a hill where the fairies are known to be. Take the grass from the fairy hill, add it to the add it to the oil. Okay, this is not an actual recipe. <laughs> it sounds very very bizarre. So moving on, um, flower pudding. Okay, another one. Nesterum and marigold salad. I have no idea what nesterum is. Um, I'm probably mispronouncing that word, 220. Um, some sort of edible flower. Moving on. We're almost done. Acorn squash and cinnamon and honey. I did try this one. It's actually very, very good. Um, and green man salad, which is probably just a regular salad. 
yes, lettuce, dandelion, the greens, of course, bacon, and uh, white vinegar and sugar, so, and salt, so that's what that is. Decent recipes when it comes to veggies, I'll say that, um, if I could have, I have no idea what nettles are. All right, I'm getting there, almost halfway through the book, on to fish, so, and there's far less recipes in here, fish, shellfish, and seaweed. Uh, soused herring or mackerel, which is, um, interesting, let's see, Pat dry, you're dealing with raw fish. Basically, you're cooking it with, you're cooking in the oven with vinegar. Okay, that does not sound appealing to me. Um, baked cod with bacon, which I tried, which is actually decently good. Uh, tweed kettle. Oh, fun. What the heck is tweed kettle? Uh, it's salmon. It's a salmon dish. Um, moving on. Uh, baked salmon. Uh, the Dublin lawyer, I believe, is um, lobster. Yeah, it's fresh lobster and whiskey. Uh, and butter and cream. So it's very decadent, thus the Dublin lawyer. Uh, fried herring and oatmeal, ginger and rosemary pike, uh, fried white fish with roses and almonds. I have never actually cooked with flour, uh, flowers before. I cooked with flour, just not flowers. Uh, moving on, mushroom and scallop pie, which I've actually done. Uh, very, very good. Uh, gooseberry mackerel. It's hard to find gooseberries in the middle of the Southwest. Uh, stew eels. That does not sound appealing at all. Not to mention, I have no idea where I'd get an eel in the American Southwest. So, fried eels in butter sauce. Oh, dear God, that does not sound good at all. Smoke, which I have no idea what the heck is. Uh, two, three, eight. A few things I look up. Uh, it's a fish. Moving on. Never heard of it. It's a fish. Uh, cartagen wrinkles. What the heck? Again with the moss. So it's this dried moss with shellfish. So you're cooking dried moss with shellfish. So it looks like the moss works as a gelling agent. So, which kind of makes sense. I think they use that in vegan things as opposed to gelatin. So that's what this is. So no, this is apparently not some new vegan thing. They've done this for a while. So let's see. Yeah, you soak this in water for 30 minutes and then it will disintegrate if you rub any of the larger pieces or through a sieve. Add milk or cream, simmer for another 10 minutes. Then add fresh flesh of shellfish and seasoning and bring to a boiling point and eat once the delicious fish and soup. Delish, delicious fish soup with lots of brown soda bread. So it's some sort of weird moss soup. Uh, moving on, where was I? Uh, pass, mm -hmm. Salmon and raisin pie. Oh, wonderful. Another thing I can't pronounce. Haka muggies. I'm not joking. That's what it says. 252. Uh, talks about ancient sacrifices. Oh, fun. Um, ew. Okay. Well, that's a no. Uh, a muggy is fish stomach, along with cod liver and oatmeal. Oh, no. No, 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 that sounds disgusting. Uh, moving on, stewed dulse, which is seaweed. I do know what that one is. It's a red seaweed. I was able to get off, off online a while ago. And baked trout. So a um, couple of these things I would not touch with a 10-foot pole, including a bunch of eels in the stomach of a fish. Moving on. Get them. All right, the meat and wild game. This is also the area where I cannot cook a lot of these things, and there's a bunch of recipes in here. Most of these should be self-explanatory. Braised beef, uh, Bookerman's sandwich, which I'm guessing is a sirloin steak, and Vienna bread, so it's a sandwich. Um, corned beef and cabbage. No, that's not the... I think it's a transplant from the U.S. So... Uh, Hand-fried steak and Irish whiskey. This book is heavy, so I'm slightly putting it down here. Um, let's see. Pan, yeah, uh, 
pan fried steak with Irish whiskey, meat pies with butter sauce, traditional spiced beef, scotch callops with cream. What the heck is a callop? Anyway, um, this looks like a rump roast and mushrooms. This actually doesn't look bad. Onions and rump roasts and wild mushrooms and cream. So it's actually a decent recipe. Um, let's see, where was I? Chicken and almond rice. Honey glazed chicken. Campon in wine sauce. What the heck is a campon? I'm guessing this is some sort of chicken recipe. Because again, this is wild game. Um, no. Wonderful. I still have no idea what the heck a campon is. It's going to tell me in this thing. Um, yes, it's showing a picture of a chicken. So it's a chicken recipe. Moving on. Um, where was I here? Boiled pigeons. Yeah, it's going to be hard to get a hold of it. If you're a hunter, you can get a hold of these things. I don't know if you hunt pigeons anymore. Uh, partridges in orange sauce. Roast pheasant. Wild duck and spiced oranges. Some of these are extremely expensive to cook. Uh, turkey breast with cherry sauce. Yeah, I'm not a cherry person. Michael Mass goose with sage and onion stuffing. That's expensive, to say the least. Boiled limerick ham. Pork. Wonderful, this looks Welsh or Irish. I'm not quite sure. It's Celtic, and I can't pronounce it. Shisht. So, 129. Uh, hold on, it's pronouncing things. 290. All right. Um, it's pork chops. It's pork chops and pear. It's pork chops and pork kidneys and onions and carrots and potatoes wrapped in some sort of a pastry. So, moving on. Where are we here? Um, pig totters. Do I want to know? Ew. Pig's feet. Sorry if people like pig's feet, but uh, I'm a middle-class white person who um, got grossed out going to Chinatown as a child. Pet pig's feet. Um, yuck. Moving on. Uh, let's see. Ham, and, ham with cream. Pork tart. Garlic pork with chestnuts, which doesn't actually sound by. Skinless pork sausage. Roast venison. I'm actually not fond of venison. I'm not particularly fond. Of it. It's maybe too gamey for me. I'm not a venison fan. I've had it before. Venison balls and sour cream. I'm going to double check to me. That doesn't mean actual venison balls. It's possible. Um, no, it's just ground venison. <laughs> Hang on. Um, red deer. Okay, this is one of those, this is not an actual recipe thing, I think. Um, yeah, it's just talking about actual red deer. Um, moving on, shepherd's pie. I've made that a dozen times in a dozen different ways. Um, traditionally, if it's lamb, it's shepherd's, shepherd's pie. If you're making it with beef, it's cottage pie. And slight difference. Um, haggies. What the heck do I want to know? Um, yeah, or haggis, sorry, I'm mispronouncing these things. It's sheep stomach. Um, and beef fat. Um, this does not sound appealing to me. I may try it if I didn't know what the heck I was eating. And poacher's pie, which is... Let's see. They're actually... Bacon, wild mushrooms, leeks, ah, rabbit. I can't even try rabbit. I can't find rabbit anywhere. Um, and I don't hunt. Yeah, I'm a lazy hunter as my cats would consider it. I don't physically hunt. Okay, so that's what's in um, this book. They also have various songs in here. So there's a lot of information in this book. It's very, very good. Um, even if I can't eat half the recipes. I do like the veggies. Oh, dear. Okay, so here's the last chapter, and this is a very, very long video, um, because this is a very, very big book. So, and I'm choosing to read through all the recipes in here in case you actually want to buy this book. Um, 
shortbread. So this is the desserts. We're not having to like figuring that out. So shortbread, apple cinnamon cake, midwinter midwinter suns, um, uh, orange dish. Moving on, uh, marmalade cake, CD cake, lemon curd, yellow man. Um, Butter and brown sugar and corn syrup and vinegar and baking soda. I'm still not quite sure what that is. Moving on. Um, Las Mus cookies. Apple potato cake. Apples and red wine. Again, this is almost entirely kid-friendly. Um, rice custard. Flour pudding. Candied rose petals. Candied blossoms. Fruits and preserved flowers. Crystallized leaves and blossoms. Oh, that sounds fine. Irish tea brock, which I'm guessing is some sort of bread, um, toasted almond pudding, porter cake, Christmas plum pudding, funeral cake. Um, i to figure out what the heck funeral cake is. Uh, let's see, it, it's some sort of fruit cake. They, like, they love their fruit cake. Moving on. Um, fairy cakes, I think I've heard of. Um, this is an actual recipe. So it's vanilla and orange and it's some sort of cookie. It's like, it's just biscuits. So where are we? Uh, mincemeat parcels with Irish whiskey cream. Mincemeat is again, it's um, fruit. And it's, it's dried fruit mostly. Um, figgy pudding, which yes, you periodically hear in all sorts of Christmas songs, and yes, I will tell you what the heck it is. It's, again, it's a bloody fruitcake in brandy. So it's apricots and prunes and apple, dried apples and raisins and dates and lard. So it's, yeah, it, it's a, it's a fruit pudding. That, what is with these people and their obsession with fruit puddings? Moving on, tansy pudding, which is tansy leaves in some sort of pudding. Moving on, uh, is an actual pudding or am I just being American here? Uh, yeah, so I'm an American and pudding means something else. <laughs> in British and uh, England, it just means dessert. So in the US, it refers to a specific type of dessert, normally a very soft um, custard-like thing. So normally with gelatin, thus pudding. So moving on here, rum balls. I detest rum. I don't drink alcohol and I still detest rum. Um, stream, steamed orange pudding, Cornish saffron cakes. That sounds expensive. Um, Luanza pie, apple and raw berry tart. I have no idea what raw berry is, but again, I live in the American Southwest. We don't see lots of trees. Um, moving on, baked, uh, baked apples, bread pudding, uh, you know, bread pudding, the thing people, if you ever watch, old watch episodes of Chopped, which is a competition cooking show, they always try to make in the last round and they screw up because you, bread pudding takes time. Moving on, burnt sugar cake, nut cake. Oh, fun. This is person's dates. Maura O'Brien's or Baron's Christmas cake, uh, tea time spice loaf with raisins, triple citrus curd, basic herbed honey, honey honey of roses, uh, caramel honey apples, honey butter, and almond, honey almond candy. So that is it. This is a very, very big book, which is the reason this is a very, very long video, because I'm nice enough to read all of these recipes. Um, very interesting. Again, not entirely kid-friendly, even less than my these device and fire cookbook because uh, there's a lot of alcohol there's a lot of stuff here that i can't cook being in the american west um maybe back east you can find some of this stuff i have no idea where the heck you would find mutton if you're a hunter or hunting in your families um you might be able to find this stuff or you know some i'd still like to try rabbit it's on my list so fantastic cookbook lots and lots of information besides the cooking stuff in here um, on Celtic history and uh, belief systems and stuff like that. So 
Very, very fantastic book. I'm going to wrap up this video. It's long enough. Um, so that's it for this video. If you like what you see, this is bizarre. So I don't normally do cookbooks. I do children's books. Uh, most of the um, films I'm doing that are going to be in my cookbook section are not this long and are focused on books. So I do, again, mostly children's, fun children's books. Um, occasionally I'll do some more intense stuff but mostly I stick to children's books and fun family films. We are a homeschooling family, so if I do uh, do more intense stuff, it's education related. My child, however, is two. So we don't, I will get up to more educational uh, homeschooling videos. We are secular, so we are not religious. So that's kind of part of the focus of what I cover here. So again, if you like what you see, like and subscribe. Check out what I've got. Look forward to a whole heck of a lot more. Thank you.